Hello, Commerce Gates, your Bud Warshack here. Why, why have I picked up a issue of James Bond 007 or Ian Fleming's James Bond 007? That's because I'm reading James Bond at the moment. Is my copy of Moonraker. Oh, can you see it? Where is it? The same Moonraker. There we go. And I was surprised at how readable it is and what a good writer Mr. Fleming is. And I wanted to see if the character of James Bond in the original book was the same as the character they were writing in this comic book because it is Ian Fleming's James Bond after all. So this should be um, in accordance with the character as, you know, written in the book, right? So let's have a look at the character first. This is James Bond, obviously. It's got the, the flip of hair there. When James Bond gets ruffled, his hair sort of flops down a bit. But it's supposed to flop over his right eyebrow, and that is not going to flop over his right eyebrow, is it? So the hair needs to be a little bit further down on his head. And the jaw is a little bit too square as well. And the mouth is described as cruel. Yes, yeah, cool. And cold, sort of greyish blue eyes. I think he's got the eyes right there. Just, yeah, the, the jaw is a little bit too square. And the hairline is a little bit too preceded, I would say. By the way, um, the, the writer of the book, um, Greg Pack, oh dear. Is Greg Pack going to be able to accurately portray James Bond? Because Greg Pack is just another, well, he's a comic book writer, so you know he's a leftist. If you go on his Twitter feed, you'll see him um, trying to get everybody to vote um, against Donald Trump and um, the insinuations of racism and sexism all over his Twitter feed. So he's a social justice warrior. He is um, an NPC, if that means even allowed nowadays. So even when you're buying a, a dynamite comic book, these these NPC SJWs who are uh, infecting the mainstream, they, they get everywhere. They, they won't even leave you know the, the indies to, to other writers. So there's, there's no escaping from them really. But anyway, let, let's see if he does a good job with this book. But what do you think? Do you trust an NPC social justice warrior who's obsessed with Donald Trump? <laughs> if you do, you're, you're a lot more trusting, maybe naive than, than I am. It's nice to stay naive, but you have to get with reality. You really do. Because uh, if you don't get with reality, at the end of the day, reality will, will get with you. So, what's going on here? Um, the book begins in, in Singapore, for some reason. And on the second panel, we've got this guy here. Who, that must be Russian, right? Uh, he's white, obviously, and he's got the blonde hair. So, I'm thinking, well, blonde hair, white skin, male, Russian. That's the villain. <laughs> that's, that's bound to be the villain, right? It's a bit confusing at the beginning, actually, because there's all this... Is it real Russian or fake Russian? They're sticking in there. And there's too much of it, really. It goes on a bit. Or is it, I don't know, is what, what language they speak in Singapore? I, I don't know. What language is it, Mr. Greg Pack? <laughs> why is he, why are you just wasting these speech bubbles like this? I don't know. Anyway, the, the Russian guy is um, making a, a bid for escape here. I guess they need to contact him and uh, in, uh, interview him about his alleged um, collusion with Donald Trump during the 2016 presidential election. Anyway, so the, the evil blonde head Russian is, is on the run. Here he is in. Is he in the hotel? Yeah, he's in the hotel. Now he escapes the hat. That would be important at the end of the book. Who the hell was that? And uh, there he is. He's on the bottom floor. Come get me now. And James Bond is taking a sip of martini. He was, actually, he was, he was drinking um, vodka in the in uh, in Moonraker and champagne. And he was taking some Benzedrine as well. And he, he didn't say shaken, not stirred. And that, that was not his order. I don't know if that's a, a movie thing, then the shaken, not stirred thing. Anyway, he's having, having a, a drink there. And we've got a, a lady eyeing him up. So I guess he's a, an object of desire in this book, as he is in 
this book, of course, because it's Ian Fleming writing an idealised version of himself, really. Anyway, from there, you get a bit of card action. And there's, I don't know anything about cards, but in Moonraker, at the first, at the first part of the book, there's a really fascinating scene, really, uh, of cards. So I didn't really understand what was going on because I'm not a, I don't know how to play poker or bridge or anything. But it was um, written extremely well and it seemed very, very thrilling. It was um, James Bond versus um, Hugo Drax, the bad guy of the book. And I'll tell you what, James Bond was a bit of a cheat at the, at the cards, but, but Drax was cheating as well, so he was kind of you know, getting what he deserves. Anyway, this is actually um, quite a good part of the book because James Bond is, is uh, feigning incompetence. And he was feigning drunkenness in the in the uh, Moonraker card scene. There we go. So he's pretending that he's lucky, and the guy's realizing, "Ah, oh, you're not lucky. You're smart. You know what you're doing." So that's uh, quite accurate to the book, really. That there's a, a card scene going on, and James Bond is a bit of a crafty card player. Anyway, from there, the the Russian. Making this escape, it looks like James Bond's following him, and other people are following him as well, including one of the guys who was playing cards with him. This main guy here with the goatee, and they have a bit of a fight. So I'll just zoom through for copyright reasons. Um, the fight ends inconclusively. James Bond gets back into his car, and for some reason, he's talking to. This is supposed to be Money Penny, right? That's not what Money Penny looks like. So it's like Money Penny has been diversified, and also why is she contacting him during the middle of a mission? That that doesn't happen in the book. Money Penny is a secretary. She doesn't have direct contact in the middle of a mission with James Bond. And you know why this is done, don't you? Obviously, she's you know the, the the tint of her skin has been darkened for ideological reasons, and also you need to have a woman telling a man what to do in the comic book because today all the men are working for the single mom matriarchal welfare state, so they have to have a woman telling them what to do. So here we have the secretary of M rather than M himself, basically telling James Bond what to do. Thank you, Greg Pack. See the, uh, the subtle ideology which they seep into the pages of the comic book? It's beta male programming. It's teaching the, the boys that um, the women are in charge. Even in the James Bond book. And at the end of the book, this bloke, he picks up his, his, um, his hat. Um, does that mean anything? Yeah, this, this is the guy who was playing cards with James Bond. And it was also the guy at the beginning of the book who was chasing this Russian at the beginning. There he goes. Because he threw that that bowler hat at him, so it wasn't clear who he was at the beginning. At the end, it's made fake clear, and he's also portrayed as being um, very attractive in a, in a James Bond kind of way. Of course, he got this woman checking out his backside as as he as he walks past. So the coolest guy in the book is not James Bond. The coolest guy is this. Oriental looking man with the, the bowler cap on, with the bowler hat on. So the focus of the book is him, not James Bond. Why have you done that, Greg Pack? Very strange. Isn't a James Bond book supposed to be about James Bond? Isn't James Bond supposed to be the coolest guy in the book? Not a, a random guy with a goatee and a hat. So that's uh, Greg Pack's James Bond. Um, it's not. It's not Ian Fleming's James Bond, it's, it's Greg Pack's James Bond. We've got Diversity in Money Penny, who's playing a larger role in the story than she ever would do in any of the original novels and the movies. And we've got James Bond taking orders from her. And being a, a secondary character really in his own book. Because this, this guy here is shown as being his equal there. Really. He's fighting with James Bond. And at the end of the book, it's all about him. Just like it was at the beginning. So, 
We're supposed to care, I guess, about this guy more than we care about James Bond. I never fail from a leftist, but there we go. That's what they do, isn't it? They're giving absolutely everything. They're giving Star Wars, they're giving Doctor Who, and they're giving James Bond, and it's it's all a big old fail, isn't it? How many copies of this book are, are going to be sold? Not many, not many at all. But um, hey, what are you gonna do, eh? When you go into the comic book store and the SJW books coming from SJW Marvel are, you know, just as bad as the SJW books coming from Dynamite Comics. Where's the diversity? Where's the choice? If you've got a choice of SJWs in Marvel, SJWs in DC, SJWs in Dynamite, SJWs in IDW, SJWs in Dark Horse Comics, where, where's the option? Where's the choice? Oh, you've got Black Mask Studios as well, if you want to go really far to the left. So yeah, this lack of diversity is really destroying not just comic books, but mainstream culture as a whole, mainstream entertainment culture as a whole. Because let's face it, does, does anybody look at Doctor Who as it is today and think, wow, that's a really great show. It's never been better. Does anyone look at Star Wars as it is right now and think, wow, that's a really good movie, better than ever? No. It's, it's all going to shit. It's all going to hell in a handbasket. And it's because of people like Greg Pak who insist on sticking their ideology into the comic book and taking characters who were great in the past and gradually chipping away at them until there's nothing left. Until a vacuous hole, which you can classify as diversity for the sake of diversity. So there we go, that's all I've got to say for the time being about James Bond 007. Sort that. I'm going back to the original. Uh, thanks for checking out the video review. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you'd be so kind. And uh, I'll catch you all later. Goodbye, guys.